Hi, I'm Brady Volpe with Volpe Firm and Nimble S. Uh, who am I? I don't know, who are you? <laughs> John Downey. And we're actually live by face to face at SCTE Expo 2022 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So, John? Good to be back. Yeah. Even though it's been two, we're three years. With people. I know. Seeing real live people. So, um, what are your thoughts on the show so far? Um, technology is technology. I mean, it's always great to come back and see everybody. You feel like the first three, four hours, you're just saying hi and shaking hands and, you know, uh, talking to everyone you haven't seen in two, three years. But uh, there's a lot of workshops. The Innovation Theater is great. The Road to 10G, I think that was kind of a good idea. They had the, uh, the uh, games this morning. That's a little departure from normally, it used to be at nighttime, the, right? The uh, robot games. The well, uh, yeah, they had robot games too. I was talking about the tech games. Okay, you know, I, didn't, tech I games. didn't make the tech games. It's was, was, it was usually at nighttime, right? But they had it like today at like 11. Yes. Yeah, the splicing and the Jeopardy game and all that. So you made that. Did yep. you, who, what did you? Ron Brunt was there, talked to him for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the Jeopardy game, there was some ambiguity in some of the questions and stuff, you know. <laughs> I wanted to blur it out, of course, but uh, yeah. Ron Hanek was there, so we got to talk a little bit. It was good, yeah. So what I've seen that I think is interesting is FDX or DOCSIS 4, well, really DOCSIS 4.0 seems to be the hot topic. Yeah. There's a ton of displays, a ton of vendors displaying DOCSIS 4.0 products, even though DOCSIS 4.0 CPE isn't available. Correct, correct. There's, the, the potential for DOCSIS 4.0. It's like, the whole idea is this is 10G. What's the road to 10G? How do I get to right. 10 gigabits per second? Um, my thought for now, and from Cisco's point of view, is what can I do to start getting there? And 204 upstream, uh, DOCSIS 3.1, as far as I can take it, 1.2 gigahertz downstream, because what we have today. Uh, but how do I go to DOCSIS 4.0? Mm -hmm. I'm going to need new modems. I'm going to need new products out in the field. I'm going to have to choose some type of DAA, right? Just, distributed access architecture, whether it's remote fire, or remote Mac fi. So there's still some talk about remote fi has already kind of proven itself and some people are going that direction. Some people are looking at the remote Mac fi. Right. So what does, I mean, what does that mean to the cable operator today if they have DOCSIS 3.1 or maybe they just invested in DOCSIS 3.1, they know they need to get to 10G and they're looking at DOCSIS 4.0 and trying to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to make that 4.0 spend yet, to make that forklift upgrade, because I invested a ton of money in DOCSIS 3.1. What are you thinking about in terms of how they could get more capacity with their existing 3.1 equipment? So, so let's think about what we think people want, not what they need, <laughs> what they want. Uh, we know what they need is much lower than what they're actually getting. Right. You know, most people are looking at speeds with the speed test site just to prove they're getting <laughs> one gig. That's the killer app. Yeah, the killer app is speed test site. Um, so what do they want because of competitive pressure or just numbers look better, lower latency and all that. And think about what a DOCSIS 3.1 modem could provide or can provide. What? Two OFDM blocks at 4K QAM, 4096 QAM. That's almost two gig for each block. That's four gig. That's a lot of capacity for and a still, single household. And there's still 32 qualms I can still run. That's, that's 1.2 gig. That's, I was going to say, that's almost another gig. So there's, that's five gig. So technically, a 3.1 modem. But that's just downstream capacity. Gig. Correct, correct. Upstream, if we do 204, we can do 20 DMA blocks. 4K qualm in the upstream is a stretch. Yes. Excuse the pun. There's too much the noise. In, there's too much noise. <laughs> and too many impairments in the upstream to have. If I do a remote five plus one amp, no amps, well, maybe. Yes, but maybe. that's a big lift for cable yeah, yeah, operators yeah. to go to no so, plus So zero. let's say this, two 96 blocks, 96 megahertz blocks of OFDMA running at one K qualm, mm -hmm. uh, 1.5 gig. With a 1.5 gig aggregate, I can offer one gig service. So that's the elusive number, right? How many number, subscribers right? To, could you offer that one gig service to? When you think about who's buying that higher tier, you know, let's say that over subscription is fuzzy math. Yes. It really is. So if I offer a one gig service from a 1.5 gigabit pipe, we used to say uh, you want to go two to one, or in, in this case, it could be 50 to one. Over you could subscription. Say, oh yeah, you anywhere can say. Anywhere from two to one to 50 to one yeah. is what you're saying over subscription. <laughs> it's funny, it's like I can say anywhere between one and a thousand. So it depends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it depends on your market. That's Ron's answer. I uh, know. It depends. <laughs> it depends on a lot, I stole it from it? Ron. So we were talking about do people want five gig as a single service flow, or they want five gig to the house? Really, no one's doing going to do a five gig application. But in the house, I have DVRs, 
I have four TVs, I have kids gaming, mm -hmm. I have multiple things going on Lots in the house. Lots of IoT devices. Yes. So how do I provide five gig just to the house? Well, if I can offer more OFDM on the downstream, say four blocks, mm -hmm. but we know the CPE can only do two blocks. Right. Can I just put multiple modems in someone's house? Like two modems. Two modems and do like a load balance. Or, yes. And load balancing is something we've solved very easily. So we know we can do load balancing with these two modems. So you're saying two modems, five gigs on the downstream each modem. That means we have 10, 10 gigs downstream in the house, theoretically. Theoretically, let's, let's put it this way. Solve the it won't be five gigs, so it's be four OFDM blocks. Okay. And 32 single carrier qualm. Mm -hmm. So we're at eight, nine gig, just yep. under 10. We're like nine gig. We could offer a five gig service. Without to going the to house, Doxus 4.0. Yeah. This is still a Doxus 3.1 service yes, you're talking correct. about. Correct. All we have to do is make sure the plant equipment can handle, well, spectrum allocation. Correct. You know, and the CMTS and RPD can handle that many qualms. Mm -hmm. So then the, that begs the question, how do I get to Doxus 4.0? Can I, should we, I'm scared about the Doxus 4.0 because if we go FDX one path and FDD another path, ESD, extended spectrum Doxus, I'm going to require two modems, two separate types of CPE. That's going to keep the price of the modems up. We're not right. going to have this economies of scale like 3.1 where we have one 3.1 modem doing everything. We're going to have two different 4.0 modems. And they're going to be very, very expensive. Yeah, I'm concerned about that. Of course, you know, the CPE costs usually, they're really high at the beginning and they start coming down over time. You know, 4.0 modems will actually drive 3.1 prices down. You know, eventually, they usually does. Um, but what if we just put a, new chipset in the 3.1 modem. And new instead of 3.1, we... 3.1, but yeah. we already have a 3.1 chipset. But the chipset can only do two OFDM. It's limiting. Yes, it's, it's the capacity is limited. So where are you going with this, John? So why don't we just put maybe the newer chipset in? It's not ESD, it's still 1.2 gigahertz downstream, mm -hmm. still 204 upstream, but it has more downstream capacity. So maybe for All a right. different Broadcom, TI chipset, whoever the chipset is, uh, four OFDM blocks. Now, instead of me having to acquire load balancing and two modems in a house, I could right. do one modem and offer five gig. But, but there's not a standard for this chipset. So it? maybe we make up our own standard. So everyone's kicking around the idea. Someone said 3.5, they didn't like that. And 3.1. is an odd number. Yeah, 3.1 plus. Uh, so here's a good one, 3.14. 3.14. Pi. A Pi modem. We'll call it a Pi modem, just like a Raspberry Pi. I like we'll this We'll call idea. it a Pi modem. Yeah. <laughs> Very so nice. there it is, 3.14 will have more capacity. It's still 3.1, you know, 1.2 gigahertz downstream, 204 megahertz upstream, but now we'd have four OFDM blocks. It's genius. Yeah, hey, there we go. I like the concept. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. I have I a cool idea. So other things that are happening here, the, the sessions have been good. There's been a lot of good workshops. Um, you we were in the, one, right? We had the PNM Live yeah. on Tuesday, right at the beginning of the session. We had um, uh, a video with Shaw Communications using nice. PNM, um, Nimblebiss PNM, which was great. Uh, Aklaza had a video with PNM, and then Larry Wilcott had some slides showing the latest things that he was doing. So the PNM Live was fantastic. Um, then also. We had a collaborative paper on DOCSIS 4.0 and how PNM is working with that that Ron Rannick presented on nice. Tuesday afternoon. And then we saw some gaps that uh, you know we don't necessarily know how PNM is going to work with FDX. So there's a lot of investigation we have to do with that. That was what came out of that paper. And then today I also give a pre presentation on virtual CMTSs. Top five things you need to know about virtual CMTSs. So virtual CMTSs uses distributed access architecture mm -hmm. where there's a, a virtual CMTS really doing the Mac scheduling, all yeah. the things that the Mac core would typically do, and then all the RF comes out of your remote find. So it's a, really a CMTS shirt. on a server. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but it gives you, you know, you invest in, in the CMTS, a hardware-based CMTS, and when you go to do the upgrade from say DOCSIS 3.1 to DOCSIS 4.0, you have to get rid of that CMTS and upgrade yeah. it. Cool thing about using servers is when you upgrade that server from DOCSIS 3.1 to DOCSIS 4.0, you're just upgrading the software, yeah, yeah, so you're protecting yeah. that investment in the CMTS Maybe adding more, C more CPU, Correct. more servers. Yeah, and you can yeah. also run other applications on that server too. If you can run DOCSIS and you can run yeah. Pawn simultaneously, or you could even run a speed set to server. That, that brings up a good point, because you know the other terms that we're thrown around a lot, and I haven't heard here, was machine learning and AI. 
AR, AI, yeah, those are, those you know, are augmented other reality. That happen. So you could, yeah. you know, theoretically, as you're saying, if you ran machine learning and DOCSIS at the same time, you could really expand the capabilities of what we're doing now on our DOCSIS networks. Nice. The other thing that we were talking with Jason Miller, my colleague at Cisco, was uh, OUDP. Yes. How do we solve the problem of leakage testing in a 204 upstream? Right. You know, normally we'd have signal in the downstream being broadcast out downstream to everybody, go around and look for the leakage. Well now that 204, or that frequency is on the upstream. So now I got to generate it from every house somehow. Well we fixed that with uh, allowing the CMTS to talk to the 31 modems and generate a signal from the modems themselves. The modem. And the new test vendors can now Correct. actually The modem find actually becomes located. our signal source yes. that's injecting signals out and then we measure those signals from the modems and we can actually find leaks in, signal, in customer subscribers' homes because I mean the subscribers' homes really become the leakiest part of the network. Yes. Our modems are transmitting high level signals at much higher frequencies as we go to 204 megahertz and even higher for DOCSIS 4.0. Yeah. Up to 684 megahertz, we're yeah. going to have modems transmitting at high powers. In frequency ranges, aeronautical and other rate frequencies that we have concerns for, but now we can use this OUDP to basically become our signal leakage test. So it's such cool things that we're yeah. doing, and, and there's papers and discussions and uh, presentations that people can see here, demos yeah. even, with uh, how OUDP is being used for that. So that's a cool thing to bring yeah. up. Yeah. What, what else have we seen? Uh, well, I don't we I think to we're going to see more Technetics. Oh yeah, so Technetics, Technetics has a, a demo where they're, an FDX demo where they have amplifiers that are transmitting in both directions, but instead of having just node plus zero for FDX, they're showing a demo where we can go up to six amplifiers deep in a FDX cascade. So I think that's a, a pretty cool concept now that FDX is no longer theoretically limited to node plus zero. I, I liked, uh, it's a simple things, right? I liked uh, the Technetics tap they designed, three gigahertz housing, power yeah, passing, cool. uh, Caesarless uh, stingers. Yep. Um, the fact that they have an insert that can change direction, instead of the faceplate changing direction, right. it's an insert. Uh, they have a signal conditioner that goes on a tap faceplate, so it was kind of an interesting design as well. It's, it's funny, it's like we've been doing taps and things like this forever, things that, yeah, and we're still reinventing change, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're reinventing yeah. it. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's a good recap of, the, of what we've seen so far to show John. It's, you know, it's so good to be back and seeing the technology again and also Agreed. seeing people, so good catching up with you and seeing you face to face, so. <laughs> Pressing the flesh. Awesome. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so long, everyone. All right. Out of here. Put your hands together.